What's up you guys, welcome to episode one. We are gonna be talking about Ruby Frankie, who was a YouTuber, mommy vlogger, family channel. Have you heard any details about this freaking case? I've just heard from what you've been researching. Oh my God. Okay, I understand they hate when it comes to family vloggers because this, she started her family um, channel, it was called Eight Passengers. She started it in 2015. She's from Utah. She's from, what town in Utah is it? It just says Washington County. Washington County would be like St. George. Is that like close to where you grew up? No, not no. at all. It's like all the way down Southern Utah. Okay. Would be Washington County. But I swear I, I heard him saying something that just happened like, I thought they said Springville or something like that. Springfield or Springville? Springville or maybe or? Let I me... thought she was from like Utah County-ish. Okay, she was arrested in Ivins. Utah. Okay. Where is that? I have no idea. <laughs> Never heard of it in my entire life. She was arrested and charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. So her and then her business partner, which was this like creepy, weird ass lady that had this mental health, like she was like a mental health specialist and like, I don't even fucking know. We'll, we'll get to her in a second. But her and her business partner get arrested because one of Ruby Frankie's children, a little boy, he was 12 years old, he escaped Jody's house, the business partner, and he shows up to the neighbor's house with, he's emaciated, he's just skinny, he's asking for food and water, he's saying, please call the police, um, I have another sibling, you know, down the road. Um, and he had been held hostage. There was tape on his um, on his legs. There was cayenne pepper and honey put on his wounds and then wrapped in like cellophane and then duct taped. Um, it's just absolutely horrifying. I kind of want to just show you like the body cam footage so you can like, so you can see. We're gonna play some body cam footage. That's great, step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out of step the house. Step out of the house? Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa! We're just going to step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a minute, how do you come to my house? Right there. Look, they come on into my house. Just have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. I'll explain everything after. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the Spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. And God told me I'm done. And I, I just, oh, uh, so <clears throat> Satan has taken You're everything right. away from me that I love. And I'm a good woman. I don't do naughty things. Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can. <laughs> to keep <sighs> truth in our family. And Thank you. I'm, I'm committed to our family. I'm committed to you and our marriage, no matter what happened. Thank you. Thank you. I will be here to support you in any way that I can. We just want to get to know you a little, so if you just want to share a little about yourself and what brought you down here. And... I trust my attorney. He said, don't say anything. And I said, I have nothing to hide. And he's like, I know that. But just let me be there with you when we talk. Uh, you guys seem nice people. I'm not this difficult. This is really, if you knew all the pieces, I think you'd have a lot of empathy for what's well, going on. Walter says she took note of Jody Hildebrandt's reaction when first responders raided her home. Then when you look at the house portion of it, I feel that Jody's demeanor is interesting. If you look at her just sitting on the couch, I think she looks actually very defeated. She knows she's been sort of discovered. And it was Jody Hildebrandt's home where the vault or safe room was discovered in the basement. My first thoughts were obviously on the safe. I think we expected that's safe to be open. And it, to me, it looked like closet gun safe, basically, is what I was expecting sort of on the other side of that. Lots of people have them, particularly in the basements of their homes, to hold long rifles and multiple weapons and those kinds of things. I did not expect to see a full sterile room on the other side of it. And 
not just a full room, but a room equipped with plumbing, kitchen, running water, and a bed. Walder calls the room itself unusual. No, I wouldn't say it's common to have a safe like this. They're very expensive, actually. They're not cheap safes. It's, it's typically a, a floor to ceiling safe like that. I wouldn't say it's the most common type of safe. I have a safe in my home and it's not that. But I've seen them before to hold weapons mostly. But I think safe rooms, depending on where you live, are not necessarily uncommon. I live in Tornado Alley and people do have them. But they're not rooms that are designed like that, which is designed to sustain life for prolonged periods of time. Safe rooms and homes from tornadoes, weather, those kinds of things, they're just designed for you to be in there for a matter of hours to stay safe and then emerge. This had full support of life in it, basically, um, for however long uh, was intended. I said running water, uh, bathroom facilities, a bed, a refrigerator, that is for someone who's planning to live there over a prolonged period of time, and that is highly unusual. Body camera video shows first responders discover the vault and head inside. The video is about 15 minutes, but doesn't have any audio. Walder says that's probably on purpose. In my opinion in, in this, and again, that's just my opinion, is if they were speaking about the minors, um, and using their names and speaking about what happened to them, a lot of that will remain sealed because those minors do have a right to their privacy because they are under the age of 18. So if they were using their names, describing what they saw, who things may have been done to, most likely they turned off the audio because it just made it a lot easier in terms of documenting and presenting, but I'm certain that they were taking notes and those kinds of things. It's just so heartbreaking because obviously it's fucking child abuse, you know? Um, Ruby Frankie, she got weird around 2020 when this Jody chick shows up. People online were like criticizing Ruby Frankie from this like one issue, I mean, there were several red flags, but one issue, her six-year-old daughter goes to school and forgets to pack her lunch. And she's like, well, sorry, maybe someone can give you a sandwich, like it's your responsibility. Like, could you imagine your kid hungry at school, not eating? Like, that's horrible. Like, they're six years old. Like, six year olds forget their lunch all the time. It happens so much in my kids' old school that they wouldn't even buzz us into like the main building. You would just go up, you would put their lunch in like the corridors or whatever, and like at lunchtime they'd come and grab it. Like, it happened constantly. Kids forget shit because they're kids. I forget shit everywhere all the time, you know? Yeah. In Utah, DCFS is different, right? So like, if you call them on them, I feel like they have so much problems, especially in like where I grew up in Ogden and places like that, where like they don't really investigate. So I don't, I'm not very surprised that like all the abuse went that long without anybody saying anything. I think people try to. I think people try to report them to CPS and DCFS and, and they just came back with like not a lot to go on. Um. Let me tell you about this Jody chick because it kind of it kind of all goes back to her. Okay, so this is what her Wikipedia says. Jody Hildebrandt is an author, life coach, and founder of Creator of Connections Classroom based in Orem, Utah. Yes. Um so like doing kind of a deep dive on what she did, she was a psychologist and she would like counsel people or whatever. She was actually on probation for hurting, like mentally abusing one of her clients because he had, he says he has a sex addiction, which is the same kind of tactics that Jody used on Ruby Frankie's husband. I forget his name. Um, she, Jody comes in, she ruins people's marriages. She says, oh, if you watch porn, you have a sex addiction. And uh, Jody was able to get Ruby and Mr. Frankie, I forget his name. They separated for a long time because he needed to go work on his quote, sex addiction or addiction to porn. Um, and the husband was just not around for an entire year, but Jody was on probation because she hurt another individual and her tactics were very similar to what we're seeing with Ruby Frankie is that she separates people from their family, separates people from, from anyone. And then if you try to leave this cult-like situation, she will like maliciously attack you. 
like the the man that she abused um he couldn't go to any other psychologist in the area because she was calling them and being like don't take on this client he's whatever crap she was saying um and so ruby frankie's children were found at jody's house um the little girl was in the closet shaved head same thing emaciated um not as severe abuse as the 12 year old boy but still extreme abuse she i don't think she was bound at the time that they went into the home um now orem utah and i even like those are like hundreds of miles apart right they have to be because orem is like utah county and i've never once heard of ivan so i assume that's probably like another town down by like st george or washington county area hmm. Yeah, there was multiple um, cops, multiple jurisdictions helping with this case. Yeah. And it's so creepy. Like when you watch Ruby Frankie get arrested, she doesn't say one word. It is weird. You shouldn't talk to law enforcement ever without a lawyer, but she's just like. You know, it's fucking creepy. Never once does she ask if her children are okay. Um, she reaches out to her husband or, you know, soon to be ex-husband and says, I need you to pick up the kids. It's an emergency. He hasn't seen his kids in a year. Shows up to the police station. And this is the body cam footage of that. It's uh, a phone call from 911. A 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in a neighborhood asking for food and water. That he was severely emaciated. That he had... What is emaciated? Skinny, scrawny. Uh, malnutritioned, not enough food, not enough water to sustain life. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services. Would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these based precious on your children. No. I bet, again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. I, yeah. Okay. That's my thoughts, but again, we might be different on that. This is the core, the core teachings of this cult leader, Jody. The core teachings of connections is that a person to achieve a true connection with another human being, they must not be in distortion. Distortion is a broad term defined by Jody. By taking her course, people learn that they are in distortion by the following: being addicted to spouse, work, shopping, electronic games, sleep, social media, driving, um, receiving compliments, <laughs> exercise, eating, drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, hobbies, entertainment. You could be addicted to any of those things and be an addict. Um, living in shame and denial, knowing you are not enough, being codependent in your relationships, living in lust or being sexually attracted to your spouse. Shouldn't you be? Of course. <laughs> Um, and controlling and manipulating others. So Jody asserts everyone is in distortion. And by taking her psychotic, cult-like program connections, you will learn how to not be in distortion anymore. Is that like some like Mormon stuff? Is Like that sounds extreme. Me personally, I feel like that's just like some extremist shit. That, yeah. you know, of course Mormons like don't like half that shit, but Mormons don't teach you like not to love your spouse. Yeah. So that don't even like sound like something the church would preach. But that's how it goes like when it comes to religion i feel like a lot of people will just like take bits and pieces from like what they like and they just add shit on top of it that like oh, pretty yeah. much just like backs up what they're trying to preach yeah they just cherry pick the fuck out of it yeah absolutely so i'm wondering if um jody was like disciplining literally fucking abusing um that 12 year old boy because of things like that you know like porn or whatever um well now utah has it where like if you look up porn and you're in utah it will just pop up like you can't look this up type of shit what, what do you mean so like if you were to like type in it be in utah and look up porn right it, it would like pop up as like uh we don't allow this in our state how it's just that's how they have it 
So like, oh, but a lot we'll of people see. have to run like VPNs and stuff just to view it. While safety and compliance are at the forefront of our mission, giving your ID card every time you want to visit an adult platform is not the most effective solution for protecting our users. And in fact, will put children and your privacy at risk. In addition, mandating age verification without proper enforcement gives platforms the opportunity to choose whether or not to comply. That's crazy. Yeah. The whole state. The whole state. I was looking into alcohol laws yeah. in Utah yeah. um, because I watched this uh, TikToker who's in North Carolina. She's a bartender and she's like kind of complaining about the laws there. And someone said, look up Utah. It is crazy. So say I wanted like a margarita. I'm not allowed at a restaurant to one, order the margarita without food. Two, I can't get like a topper of a different kind of alcohol. So say I wanted a margarita and then a shot of tequila. I'm not allowed to do that. Um, and it was just last year that you could go to a restaurant and take your drink from the bar to the table. You weren't allowed to carry it through the restaurant. They have the lowest um, like tolerance when it comes to blood alcohol levels. So you will get a DWI if you blow 0 0.05. Yeah, I think in Utah it's like 0 0.8. No, it's 0 0.5. 0 0.5? All right, then they lowered it probably. Yeah, recently. here it's 0 0.8. Like in most of the country, it's 0.8. And like that is just absolutely freaking crazy that it's so strict. You also can't buy liquor except at a certain kind of store, mm. right? Yeah. Like only one. Well, you have to go to the liquor store and then like it closes, I think, at 10. And on Sundays, it's completely closed. Okay. So. But we can't, like a lot of places you can walk into a gas station, there's like liquor right there. Mm -hmm. Or like you could just walk in and it's at like Walmart. Right. And all that, those different like stores. But in Utah, when you walk into a store, most they have is probably like seltzers or beer. You know, they don't have hard alcohol, wine, none of that. Mm -hmm. So you can't just walk in and buy whatever you want. You have to go to the liquor store. I mean, that makes sense. Like, it's weird that you can just walk into Walgreens and they have giant bottles of liquor. Yeah. Like, that is weird. So I kind of understand that. Um, so, yeah, back to Ruby Frankie. So I asked, like, because they're in Utah. There's a lot of Mormon people in Utah. Mm. I've traveled the country my whole life. And, you know, everyone that I had ever encountered that was Mormon was extremely kind, very nice. Um, you know, it didn't seem like... This is, this is fucking extreme. So yeah, they're arrested, they're charged, they pled guilty. She was sentenced to serve between four and 30 years in prison on February 20th of 2024. So what the hell does it mean, serve between four and 30? That's like a huge gap. All right, so to four and 30 would be pretty much, you got convicted of two one to 15s, which is mm -hmm. two second degree felonies in Utah. So if it's that, then that means that uh, it was a four and 30. So she was convicted of four counts of aggravated child abuse and she was sentenced um, on February 20th of 2024 to serve between four and 30 years in prison. I love that she was held without bail too. That's good. And so I assume they gave her two one to 15. Hey, Spencer here. Frankie received four consecutive sentences of between one and 15 years imprisonment, meaning she must serve a minimum term of four years, although the maximum term that could be imposed for each sentence would be 60, but it's consecutive, so. So four one to 15s? Four one to 15s. So in Utah, four one to 15s ran consecutive, or they call it bow-legged, means that like, all right, so bare minimum you can do is four years because it's all one sentence. So then that's one year on every one to 15. So the least she could do is four years. So if it's ran bow-legged, the most she can do is 60 years in prison. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, that means that they would extradite, or that means that they would kill her number. Does that make sense? So she can do up to 60 years in prison, not just 30. Right, so when it's ran concurrently, that means like, say I have four felony charges, I have to serve one year on four, like, I have to serve one year on each sentence, but it's mm -hmm. ran concurrently. I'll just serve one year, right? Mm -hmm. But like these are consecutive. That means she has to finish the one to 15 and then finish another one to 15. She has to do that four times. For instance, you are in Utah, you catch four zero to fives. If they run them concurrent, then the most they can give you is five years for all those, right? Right. If they run it consecutive or bow-legged is what they call it, then they can give you 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
because they can give you five years on each zero to five. So if she has four one, to, if she has four one to fifteens, okay, even though they're consecutive, that just affects with the time. That don't affect with the board of pardons. Okay. So, so the board of pardons, what they're gonna do is she's gonna go to prison. She's gonna see the board of pardons, and the board of pardons is gonna say, all right, you got four one to fifteens. We can keep you up to sixty years. So probably what they're gonna do is say, hey, in five years, come back to the board of pardons and we'll talk about like parole, which most likely they won't give it to her. You know, I assume she's probably gonna do at least 20 years. Wow. At least 20 years. I mean, I feel like that's fair. Yeah. These kids were put through literal hell. And you know, just to kind of circle back to um, the, the abuse, when I saw that video of her like saying, oh my kid, I'm not gonna go give her lunch. Mm -hmm. I just automatically assumed because it was a big channel, like it popped up on a drama channel. I automatically assumed, okay, the comment section is going to educate her and let her know that you can't punish a child with food. You know, that leads to so many issues. You don't use food as a, a discipline tactic. Like that's awful. Using food or their like basic necessities um, one of their oldest, he didn't have a bed for like seven months because he had played like regular teenage pranks on um, one of the younger siblings. So he didn't have a bed for seven months. Like these are just, these are not, obviously that's not the right way to punish your kid. But the more I watch these videos that have, you know, were deleted, the more it's like, wow, this is, this is red flag after red flag after red flag. Like she is severely abusing these kids. Jody's fucking house looks like a compound. Like it looks like, they're calling it like the house of hell. It looks like a fortress. It looks like one of those like bunkers kind of. And it's like $5.3 million. That's how much it's worth. And I'm like, dude, this is the scariest looking fucking house I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, yeah, it's pretty and everything. With like the, the landscape, Utah is, obviously very beautiful but when you like look like look at these pictures it looks like it's like nestled into this like canyon right so at first you're like oh it's really pretty but then when you look at it it's like dude this kind of looks like a doomsday bunker to me it looks like a facility that they'd be sending a bunch of people to because utah be utah does that so like what they do is like Lindsay Lohan has been in rehab and like multiple different celebrities will come to Utah and be in the middle of nowhere. Oh, like wilderness camps. Yeah, well not really wilderness right. camp, but more like rehabs, you know, and I feel like they think just because they're in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing around them, there's no temptation or whatever. So I assume that's why they use that like method. But like, yeah, they definitely isolate you. I don't know if that's the, the correct thing to do somebody in a situation like that. Paris Hilton talked about a, a wilderness type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, Chet Hanks has been to a wilderness program. There's tons of celebrities that have videos that go into detail about like just literal child abuse. Bad Baby, Dr. Phil sent Bad Baby to one. Like people really believe like that would help cure addiction. It's like, dude, absolutely not. Mental health. And like, this is the craziest thing. The wilderness camps that they talk about, um, Paris Hilton talks about getting woken up in the middle of the night and literally kidnapped out of her home without knowing really anything and just sent to this fucking cult-like wilderness program that's rehab. Yeah, I can't speak on that because I really don't know. But like the places that I know about is like the Journeys program they used to have. I don't know if they still have it. But they pretty much just give you like bare necessities. And they'll be like, this little like plot of land is like yours and like every day we expect you to do like this and that, you know? And like you gotta do your chores or whatever for like the camp. But like you're pretty much on your own and you gotta learn how to like survive in the wildness. But at the same time, it does teach you a lot of stuff that like, it's better than just sitting in a cell. Cause when you're sitting in a cell, you're not learning anything. At least if you're at a wilderness program and you're a kid, it's teaching you how to survive and like be able to, uh, like provide for yourself. Well, that is not what is described here. Like what Jody was doing, like she would make the kids jump on this little trampoline for hours. Um, there was one incident where um, one of the kids was just, you know, outside in the blistering fucking heat in the summer, like doing something. Like why, why would they deprive them of food and water? What in the actual hell is that about? Well, that, like, like I said, I never shared this publicly, but like my mom used, that's how they used to like punish my mom back in the day. So like her parents would like lock the fridge 
and they would like only give her certain rations and like they would have to share like four people would have to share one serving or so I don't know maybe that's just like a really like old way of thinking because like in Utah there's a lot of like older people so like these people have lived there forever they're they believe in the church and it's just like any other religion you you can believe what you want to believe but like some people take it to the extreme you know they take the bible like literally you know they think it's literally an eye for an eye you know and it's not like a metaphor these people go crazy when it comes to religion in utah i just wonder like like spare the rod spoil the child food can for, food was like the first deadly sin because it was gluttony mm. you know and like that is just crazy it's crazy how deeply like food can have um such a horrible negative impact on your mental health if it's restricted like that you could develop eating disorders um it's just that's just the worst thing to do to somebody. Well, when it comes to stuff like that, we always want something that we can't have. So we just take food for granted. So when a parent, like, obviously takes food away, which I don't agree with, but uh, that's, it makes the kid want it even more because they don't have access to it. So it's yeah. even worse. Yeah, like, you're going to rebel, but, like, in, like, the worst possible way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jody had shaved the little girl's hair. I don't even want to say their names. Like this is a small child, like my kid size, shaved her head, had her in a closet when cops went into this compound cult ass fucking place. Um, and this little girl doesn't even want to come out of the closet for four hours. Like she's scared. Mm -hmm. You could tell like the mental and emotional abuse was just so severe that she was she was afraid to talk she was afraid to do anything she was afraid to leave the closet so paramedics and first responders they gave her a pizza and some something to drink and she ate it in the closet like she did not want to leave this closet mm. um and you know the crime scene pictures are absolutely sickening there is rope there is rope with uh um handcuffs there is this honey and cayenne mixture that i mentioned that like she was putting on wounds. So I'm like wondering, did Ruby, like she's obviously not fucking mentally well, but did she like send her kids to Jody's house to, um, in like, in that kind of energy, like the wilderness camp kind of program, like these kids are acting up. I trust you with my kids. You're going to do this. Like, I don't think that's what happened. What I think is that she was a mom that had five kids. And after a while, she was just like, you know what? I'll send them wherever I got to send would send them to so I can pursue whatever I want to pursue and I don't have to deal with them. So I assume she, if that was her friend, she knows what the hell's going on, yeah. you know? And then yeah. if she sends her kids there, it's kind of her just overlooking it. I wonder if she did know the full extent because she does say the same kind of shit that Jody says where she's like restricting food and taking away bare necessities. There, there are the creepiest videos on the internet where she is making her kids sleep in the bathroom on like towels because they're sick. Like, I don't know how anyone else parents, but when my kids are sick, I get like, they'll sit in the, the bathroom for 10, 15 minutes maybe. And then they sleep in their bed with like a trash can if they have to throw up and water and like one of those ice thingies that stick on their, on your forehead if it's a fever or something like that. Like, I'm not gonna make my kids sleep in the freaking bathroom next to the toilet. It, just weird practices that were seen, you know, over several years on this channel. Um, I think Ruby wouldn't even let her oldest son have an Instagram because he was posting, and I quote, weird things without a caption. Like, okay, you can post him then. You can get all the likes and attention on posts of your son, but he can't be a fucking teenager and post a picture of himself? It had nothing to do with that. It was the fact that she didn't want to get outed for the abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So yeah. why would she give him a platform for him to be able to out her? Mm -hmm. Yep. That she doesn't care about what he posts. I don't know why I didn't immediately think Obviously, she doesn't want the older teenage kids to speak out about the abuse. I'm like, what kind of narcissistic piece of shit is like, I don't want my son having an Instagram because he puts up pictures without captions. Like, duh. Obviously, she doesn't want to be outed for it. There's five kids. I think two of the kids, like um, Ruby, Ruby had realized like, oh shit, like the cops are raiding Jody's house. Like she knew that this was going on because she called her husband who has not seen his children in a year and said it's an emergency, come get the kids. Um, so she sent the other two that she had with her, two or three, she sent them to a friend's house down the road 
And that was in Spanish Fork. Yeah, Utah? Spanish Forks. You still, huh? Utah County, I think. Okay. So they show up and they immediately detain the husband. They immediately detain the wife, and they're like, "We we're gonna need these kids. Like, let's go." And they're like, "What the? Like, they're sketched." Um, but I think it is important to mention that this friend, I forget her, her friend's name, she was, she was in this like cult connections retreat fucking bullshit that Ruby and Frankie, they were in as well. You know, so I think every single person that it had anything to do with connections, which was, uh, Jody's program or whatever, every single parent needs to be investigated. Every single one. Because if that's what she's teaching, this is so fucked. Like how many other kids have gone through this because of Jody? So I feel like there's three types of like people that are Mormons in Utah. I feel like there's the regular Mormon that goes to church every Sunday, pays his tithing. You know, that's like a lot of people. And then there's the one dude that like goes to church, but he kind of just uses like church to like look good to the public. Oh yeah, that happens everywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then there's like the FLDS people, the ones that are like polygamous. The ones that have to practice behind the scenes because multiple marriages are not legal in Utah. No matter what anybody thinks, that's yeah. not like legal. So what they do is they take like a, a sacrimonial marriage or whatever yeah. it's called. Like they, they marry through God and that's why they're allowed to have nine wives. Because legally they're not married. Where did the whole it's okay to have nine wives thing start though? It started because like back in the day when the Mormons, they, they came from... The East Coast, obviously, they made their way through like Nauvoo, Illinois. That's when Joseph Smith went to prison. They broke him out. They brought him all the way over. They made their way to Utah. They were supposed to go to California, but they found Utah and was like, oh, this is our spot. This is, you know, where we're supposed to settle. But on the way over, a lot of people were dying. So mostly men, because men's are the one, men are the ones that were pulling the wagons. They were doing all the hard work. Like... They were the ones that were doing most of like, and the women were taking care of kids and they're making sure they were warm. And so all these men were dying. So at the end, they only had like so many men, you know, and there was like multiple women, you know? So they were like, pretty much what we're going to do is you guys have to take on the role of a husband and as a dad and pretty much marry these women and recreate with them so that we can build a church and have people. Okay. The only people that were there were Native Americans, so it was civilized when it comes to their people, but there wasn't really like Easterners or foreigners that were coming over. Okay, so Ruby Frankie is 42 years old and she is a Mormon. She is not a Mormon. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because the Mormon church is going to like pretty much kick you out of the church as soon as it happens. Yeah. So they have all the files from everybody that's been baptized, sealed in the temple. They have everything. They keep 100%. So back in the day, I was in Boy Scouts. I was sealed in the temple to like my stepdad and my mom. Like they were like really LDS when I was a kid. I was a young kid. I was like five through like 10 type of deal. So they even have records of all of that. So that makes sense because they found all of this abuse like documented. They were writing out everything they were doing to these kids. So like all of the abuse is just like in these, you know, notebook after notebook after notebook describing it. And it is gruesome, the things that they describe. But I also want it to be known though. So that I wanted to ask you that like that's a, that's a normal practice of being Mormon is to document and record everything. No, well this, look, I want to try to be fair, right? Yeah. So I'm not LDS. I'm not trying to stick up for the church. But I don't think this case had nothing to do with Mormons. Do you think it was used as a manipulation tactic? I think she just happened to be Mormon. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just because she documented, that don't mean she's Mormon. That just means that she wanted to keep documentation of all this abuse. Well, it does say that she was Mormon. And I feel like maybe Jody was using like religion and God to manipulate all of these people and to hurt them severely. I know, but did, was she like an active Mormon? Did she go to church? Was she I active in the community? Ex. Let me check. You know what it I mean? Or was she like one of these Jack Mormon ladies that just like went to church a couple times and then just like moved on with their life? Cause a lot of people don't go to church every Sunday like they should. Very few I would say go to church every Sunday. Even active church members that are always going to church miss days. 
Is Jody Hilder Hildebrandt LDS? The short answer is yes. Jody Hildebrandt is LDS or a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Although her, although her teachings are not in line with LDS Church, she heavily mixes in doctrine of LDS so Mormon people will trust her more. So she used that mm -hmm. to obviously gain a fuck ton of money and um, a following, cult-like following. So she just kind of, she sprinkled that in there so that they would trust her. Her house... $5.3 million house mm -hmm. of hell, you know? Well, if you're going to play on religion, like, the best place to go to is Utah. God. So, I, you know, I don't blame her for that, like... Or the South, like the Bible Belt area. So, in Utah, there's pretty much one religion. It's Mormons. I would say, like, 90% of the religion in Utah is LDS. So, there's obviously Muslims and people that are Jewish and a bunch of different religions. And they do practice in Utah. But if you go to Utah, it's mostly Mormons. You know, every other state, there's like Catholics, people that are this, people that are that, well, Lutheran, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's different religions. In Utah, it's mostly one religion. It makes sense that that's, that was her tactic. Like tons of like religious people have these like massive followings and they get millions and millions and millions of dollars. They get, you know, rich and famous and get a ton of money and you know it makes a lot of sense that that was her tactic because you if you are you know whatever religion you are you want to you know follow and be in line with that religion you know it's it's a huge part of who who you are as a person if you are christian or um muslim or buddhist or whatever it is so it makes sense that she would play on that the sad part is when she goes to prison nothing's going to happen to her mm -hmm. Because Elizabeth Smart was a really big case. It was like she went missing in the middle of the night. Nobody really knew. Um, the dude had her kidnapped in Utah and he had her like wearing disguises and was like walking down the street with her. And like everybody in Utah was sitting there looking for Elizabeth Smart nationwide, you know. Now she does like a true crime thing. But uh, the lady of the dude that kidnapped Elizabeth Smart that helped, that helped the abuse was locked up at the Utah State Prison. And... Uh, from other female inmates that I talked to, they said that she was a tray server and she got paid and the yep. cops liked her and yep. everything was perfectly fine. What is so deeply concerning is that people that are um, abusive to children in any way, shape or form are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. You know, especially when it comes to, and you, I've heard other like, I've heard corrections officers talk about this a lot. When they work in like a sex offender dorm, they're the nicest people. They're helpful. You know, they'll, there's never any problems with them. You know, like that is what everyone needs to understand. It's the fucking nice ass pastor, the person that's helping you with groceries. Like it's those people and they're, they're kind and they're nice and they're helpful and they're charismatic to gain trust. And it is a very deep and very sick thing. Um, do I think anything is going to happen to Ruby? Maybe. Jody? No. I, and I say that because Ruby is weird. She is very weird. I could see her getting into situations with other inmates. Jody, I think she is very calculated, very smart. She knows obviously how to manipulate a very large group of people. I think Jody's going to have kind of a breeze. She's going to, you know, do, do completely fine, have a, a GP compound job and be fine. I do think Ruby Frankie is going to get into some shit. I do. I, I think she's a little fucking crazy and she's going to, she's going to irritate somebody. That's my guess. But usually if you're a woman and you go to prison for hurting a child in any way, as long as you're not bragging about the crime, as long as you're not fucking weird and getting into people's shit or just making people uncomfortable, you're fine. You know, um, a lot of women, um, just want to do their time and get the fuck out. They don't care. They don't, they don't even want to hear about it. They don't click up in the same way. Um, they'll create like families, but there's no gang. Now, having said that, like it, shit can pop off at any fucking time, anytime. I've seen tons of fights in prison. Your situation as a man, obviously a lot more gruesome than what I experienced. But yeah, that's my prediction that Ruby is going to get the shit kicked out of her at least at some point in her prison career because she's fucking weird and she's going to piss people off. I think Jody is going to, she's going to be fine. I guess all we can do is see what happens. We're going to continuously update people on this. You know, this is the only, this is only the first episode, you know, so we got a lot to talk about. I, I really want to know 
if there is an investigation, I could probably just Google it. Is there an investigation of everyone that was in this connections cult, which is literally what it was. Okay, so yeah, Jody was St. George prosecutor. So much gonna... That's that's a pretty big trip from St. George, from driving from Orm to St. George. That's a good four hours, at least five hours, maybe. So it's crazy that that's where she sent them was five hours away. Because if something happened with her kids, and you're a mom, you know, so like if something happens with, with your kids, you're five hours away. Mm -hmm. And you're trusting a person that you know is untrustworthy. You have to know it because you're, you're part of her circle. Yeah. The really scary part is like when you're watching this body cam footage, Jody or Ruby never even asks if her children are okay. And that screamed to me that she obviously knew exactly what was going on. You know, um, but the father who hadn't been, you know, around for a year because he watches porn, like, um, God forbid. yeah, he, he hears that his son was found extremely emaciated and he goes, excuse me, what? And then they describe the wounds more and describe more of the situation. And he's just like dumbfounded, you know, he's like, I trusted my wife. I just, I trusted my wife. I know. But at the same time though, it's kind of his fault too, though, because like, I don't know. Like, I get that. Like, it depends on the communication. If she was communicating with him, obviously she was lying to him. But at the same time, a year, like... I think it is the frog in the boiling pot situation where Jody brings you in in cold water and they slowly turn up the temperature because Jody was able to manipulate and destroy many marriages. But in Ruby specifically, it wasn't immediately like, hey, you guys need to separate and go your separate ways. It was after a long time of manipulating and years of this crazy ass shit where slowly he's like, okay, if this is going to help my family, we will separate and I will go work on my porn addiction. I'll go watch porn by myself you know, mm -hmm. probably. Um, and then I don't want to infect my children with porn. Like I understand where you're coming from where it's like, okay, it's his fault, but this is the tactics of a fucking cult leader slowly manipulating and playing on religion and playing on their, their empathy and playing on their, whatever, you know? I do believe that Ruby Frankie and her husband are victims of Jody, but I also am very happy with Ruby Frankie's sentence. I think that that, I think that that's a fair sentence. And I hope she gets her fucking ass beat. Both of them. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see. We're gonna end episode one here. Obviously this still does not have a name because, um, no name is taken by another podcast. This is what we need you to do in the comment section below. Please put some names for the podcast that you think would be appropriate. And the most liked one might end up being our podcast name. And Methica and Buster 420 is taken. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, you guys.